What's up guys, c 13 here, and in today's video, we're gonna be unboxing the Uni-T Smartphone Thermal Camera. It's gonna allow you to turn your smartphone into a high resolution thermal imager. All right guys, so what we got here is the Uni-T or Unit Smartphone Thermal Camera. Now this particular model is the UTI 721M or the UTI 720M. I'm not sure, but I think the only distinction is the color. This particular one though is the silver one. Now it's interesting, at least when I bought it on Amazon, the brand name listed on the listing was Goon or Gun or Gunny. However, all the images on the packaging and on the website listed as unit or uni t so we'll just go with that for now as always you can check the link in the description for the most up-to-date price at the time i was able to get this it was around 229 230 dollars so keep that in mind real quick i'll just give you a couple of the different specs so that you guys understand what we got here this thermal camera has a resolution of 256 by 192 so for a thermal camera that is pretty good most of your super cheap uh you know FLIR phone options are going to be like an 80 by 60 sensor maybe you'll get like a 120 by 240 so this is even higher than that in addition you have your relatively bog standard thermal range of negative 4 fahrenheit to 392 fahrenheit that's negative 20 to 200 degrees c and it lists an accuracy of plus or minus about two degrees c or two percent and it uses a, an Android app. I am not seeing any iPhone or iOS compatibility listed for an iOS app. So I will not be able to tell you whether or not it works, but from all the marketing materials, the product listing, and all the information I have so far, I think this is an Android only option. With that being said, let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what comes in the box. So, it just comes in this simple bag that you see here. That's how it came in the box from Amazon. And you can see here, we have more of the same information on the back. Here's the English, negative four to, uh, oh, I see guys. So this is interesting. So there are two models. So the 21M model, it's not a difference in color. It's actually a difference in a high end thermal range. So the 21M model is able to read up to 1022 degrees Fahrenheit versus the one that I have, I think is only going up to 392. So just keep that in mind. If you need that higher end range, it might be worth getting the other model. So very well packaged. You can see you've got a nice plastic molding to hold the camera in place. Let's pop that out. Comes in a little case. I like that a lot. Yeah, so this is the UTI 720M. And let's take a quick look. Okay, we have a USB-C extension cable. So in case what you need to look at is not something that you can directly fit your phone into or next to, you can snake the camera in with this long extension cable. We have the documentation and app download guide. So this is to download the software or the manual. It's cool. Microfiber cleaning cloth. And we have a standard manual with nice color images what looks like good english good instructions that's all that comes in the box so now let's take a quick look at the thermal imager itself and you can get some size reference there so here is a uh, an american silver eagle I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that size of a coin it's similar in size to like an eisenhower dollar um, I don't have any other coins 
with me right now, but that should give you some idea of the size of it. And the construction does seem to be out of aluminum. It certainly doesn't feel cheap or light. And I can't tell for sure, but it does seem like that male USB-C connector here does stick out a little bit further. So it's a little bit proud of the case with that collar it sticks out. So my hope is for most people with phone cases on their phones, this should still fit into the port. Only unless you got some super beefy otter box or something will you need an extender or will you need to use this cable. So but that's pretty much it. You know, there's not much else to look at on this thing. It seems pretty well constructed. But now what we've got to do is check out downloading the app and then testing out the camera to see how it works. All right, so I was able to find their app on the Google Play Store. You can see Uni T or Unit Thermal Mobile. So we'll go ahead and install that now. All right, we've got it installed. Let's go ahead and launch the app. I guess we have to allow this permission. I don't see another option. It says allow, allow to access music and audio. Very interesting. I'm assuming this is, oh, okay, this might be to record audio over the video and also the file access is definitely so that it can record videos and photos and you know save them to your phone so let's take a quick look here i'm going to insert it with the camera facing backwards and you can see i have a case on but it does fit i'm just going to make sure to, to allow it to use the cameras obviously and there you go. So it's now looking, you can see my foot down here, very warm. And you can see on the bed, the coin is reflective. So it's reflecting the heat from my finger. Let's see if I can turn it sideways. So, so let's take a couple pictures so you guys can see what I'm seeing. So let me quickly adjust these settings. It's on uh, Celsius right now. Let's see if I can change the units, there we go. All right. All right, so now we got Celsius. So what it's doing is you'll see it's showing hot spots and cool spots in the image. That's what these two are. And then the center crosshairs, that is gonna be that reading up top. In addition to this pure thermal view, you actually have the option to turn on a side-by-side -side visible light camera view. And that's this button right here. So if you tap that, you can see it's showing what the vis visible light camera sees built into the phone, and it's overlaying that right next to the thermal camera view. So you can see that little shiny thing, that's the coin. And if I move it over, it'll read what the coin's temperature is versus the surrounding temperature. And it is in fact a little bit cooler than the surrounding temperature of this uh, bed sheet. In addition, if we pass my hand, you can see there is a little bit of a parallax effect just because the visible light camera is all the way over here, whereas the thermal camera is obviously on this side. So if I pass my hand over here, you can't even see it yet on the visible light camera over here, but you can on the thermal and then vice versa when you come from the other side. And you can also see I have pretty poor circulation in my hands. So there you go. So, so far I've been pretty impressed. The picture quality seems pretty good. But now we need to make sure that the video quality is good too because this camera advertises 25 hertz, which is a pretty good uh, refresh rate or frame rate for the camera so that you can get relatively smooth video. It's not gonna be you know, some 120 frames a second, super smooth, you know, ultra HD footage obviously. But for a thermal camera, really all you need from it is to not be super choppy so that you can somewhat discern what you're looking at. Now what I'm gonna try and test it on is my warm steam humidifier, I think is a perfect example to show thermal delta between the steam and the cool surrounding floor and all that stuff. So let me go ahead and do that. So I don't know if you guys saw that, but that was pretty good footage. And uh, I wouldn't say that it was half bad. It certainly didn't look super choppy. I don't know if you guys remember a long time ago, several years back, I did a whole video series on the Cat S61 rugged smartphone that had the thermal camera built in. It had a much slower refresh rate on the thermal camera and the thermal camera's true resolution was only 80 by 60, the sensor resolution. Now, 
They upscaled it using a, what they call the MSX overlay technology, but nonetheless, it wasn't a very great system. Whereas with this thing, without any visible light camera overlay, you can see I'm able to discern things very clearly in terms of shape and what they are. Like here, I'll, I'll warm this piece of plastic, this case up, just so that it's visible in the thermal camera. You can clearly see what that is. And even if I get far away from it, it's still visible. With an 80 by 60 resolution without any sort of visual overlay, this type of object would be almost completely indiscernible. So this is a very usable resolution for sure. In addition, the refresh rate being much faster, you can clearly see motion when in that video that I showed you of the steam rising, it's very visible. So all in all guys, you know, there's not a lot to this thing. Like I said, I'm not some sort of thermal camera expert here. I just know that for me, this is gonna serve its purpose really well with diagnosing failing electronics or hotspots, as well as potential automotive applications. Now, for actual automotive applications, it might actually make more sense for me to grab the 1022 degrees Fahrenheit version with that, that higher peak temperature rating. But even at the cap of just under 400 degrees, this unit still is gonna be great for finding hot spots or maybe potential places where there's a heat shielding issue. And I can see this being very useful on EVs or even the electrical systems of standard gas vehicles because at the end of the day, you're not gonna be dealing with anything over 400 degrees on an electrical system. If you're dealing with something over 400 degrees, you probably have an electrical fire. And at that point, I'm not sure the thermal camera is gonna really be necessary to know that something's wrong. Whereas this will allow you to maybe find something that's shorting out, that's just getting really hot, but on the outside looks perfectly normal. And I don't know if you guys remember from that picture that I took earlier of my overhead light, you would never know by looking at that fixture that the LED driver chip is getting so much hotter than the surrounding you know, the surrounding area. Because to your eyes, it just looks like white light coming from an LED fixture. But clearly there is a lot of heat coming off of that, that driver module or that, that, that board. And so that, if anything, is gonna be the first thing to fail. And so if you're working with electronics, maybe you're building PCs, you're doing something like that, finding hotspots is really, really important. And having something like this, as compact as this, which let's, let's quit the app real quick, this, will fit into here. It's protected and you can put this on a keychain. You can throw this in your bag, whatever. This takes up no space whatsoever. So really you could put this in your pocket and there is no excuse to not have it with you if you need it. And so that's what I really like about this. So anyway, guys, that's been my experience with this thing so far. Obviously I'll, I'll keep testing it. And if, if I come across any issues with it, I'll definitely give you guys an update. But as far as I'm concerned right now, I'm very impressed. So if you guys wanna check it out, if you guys are interested in the Uni-T thermal camera, I'll try and make sure I leave links for both models. So if you're okay with this range on the thermal camera, obviously that link will be below. I'll try and specify it. And if you need the increased upper end up to over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit, I'll leave the link for that one as well in the description. So anyway, guys, if you like the video, be sure to give me a like. If you have any questions, comments, or your own experiences with the Uni-T smartphone thermal cameras, definitely let me know, you know, either, either model. Leave that in the comments below if you've had good, bad, or just okay experiences. And as always, if you wanna see more, don't forget to get subscribed.